Law enforcement officials have read it, who was the one that got away? When have you been sure of a person's guilt, but for whatever reason unable bring them to justice? I could not count the times that I have spent a whole day getting signed witness statements, filing signed complaints, audio slash video recording of a statement from the victim of domestic abuse, only to have them drop the charges, because he slash she loves me, and it won't happen again. Those are the ones that always get away, and there's nothing I can do about it. Those are the ones that make you want to clock out and go home. Related anecdote. My friend's dad is a criminal lawyer and he's fought, and one for people he himself has told us afterwards was slash were clearly guilty. I asked him how he can back someone who has stolen from and sometimes murdered others, and he told me something that stuck with me ever since. A doctor is expected to give his patient the best fighting chance at life, regardless of what kind of person he is. So now for a real story. My dad was a fed and once prosecuted a case where a father blew up his wife and infant son in his truck and tried to make it look like the explosive in the pickup bed exploded by accident. The trial really ripped my pop up since it was a difficult case to prove, but he was convinced in every way the guy did it simply because it was physically impossible for the explosive. I will admit I can't remember why or type this was 25 years ago to have blown in the way claim. My dad was and is an explosive expert and has trained hundreds of officers. And how the guy convinced the jury to exonerate him and man was my pop pissed. He talked in tears about seeing parts of the baby hanging from a tree. Bad times. Edit. I talked to my dad and have some details I had forgotten or never knew. The explosive was Tovox which I guess is used in mining. The motive was insurance. And it turns out the guy actually did get convicted of manslaughter, and did serve time, but just a few years. It's the kind of compromising from juries that can be very frustrating for law enforcement. My dad arrested a guy about two decades ago on suspected murder charges. The guy pulled a gun on my dad, who full on tackled the perp. Sadly, there wasn't enough evidence to convict the guy of murder, he was still in for a few years for pulling a gun on a cop. My dad was sure this guy was guilty, but he got out a few years back. However, the guy did get caught after a cop pulled him over for a suspected DUI, and this genius pulled a gun on this cop too. However, this cop wasn't quite as daring, and shot the guy fatally. My grandfather was a cop in a small town with very little crime. Every day he would go to the same cafe for a wrap coffee. A man recruited a partner to go on a murder spree, but they only had one gun. The first step of the plan was fake a fight out back of the cafe, and when my grandfather responded, they would jump him and steal his gun. Luckily the man's partner backed out at the last second, and they never executed step one of their plan. The man changed his plans, and ended up killing a cab driver. My grandfather ironically was the one that apprehended him, and he told my grandfather the whole story. He also told my grandfather he was going to fake being insane and would eventually walk out of the mental hospital. My grandfather told this to the judge, but he said it was not admissible. The man ended up walking out of the mental hospital. Fled to California, where he brutal murdered at least two other people. P. S. One thing that always gets me thinking about this story is that if they both went through with their plan and killed my grandfather, I would not be here today. The thought kind of weirds me out. In my hometown there was a 22 year old college student who lived with his parents. He wasn't doing very well in school, and the school in question was expensive, so his parents decided to stop paying for college and maybe that he should get a real job. The kid was pissed and decided that the best thing to do would be to kill his parents. So, he bought an axe and used it in a manner that resulted in his parents' deaths. It was quite gruesome. I remember hearing that the father took a blow to the head and was knocked out, but didn't die right away rather. He woke up a few hours after his son left and stumbled around the house with partial brain damage before dying from exsanguination. The police in this town hadn't had a crime this horrific in 30 years. Proper procedure was not followed. Not only was evidence at the crime scene not preserved, but the scene was basically trashed. The whole department tracked bloody footprints everywhere, evidence was moved or misplaced, and so forth. They had no witnesses. They were unable to even file charges against the son, even though the circumstantial evidence was fairly compelling. 
quite something to get away. Edit. Looks like I got the biggest detail completely wrong. In fact, the guy was convicted. But the police mishandling of the case was true. Additionally, it seems the mother of the murderer actually maintained her son's innocence even during the trial. Apparently, he had also attempted to murder her. He survived, but she didn't recall the incident. Although I now work for a large policing service, network admin, this particular tale goes back to my much younger days working as campus security at a big Canadian university. This campus is at the top of a small mountain, which is relevant to the story. My buddy and I were called to check out an accident. When we arrived, we found a single car a good 10 feet off the road, facing the edge of a cliff. Another 10 feet or so, and they would have been several hundred feet further down, on the highway below, or into the ocean. Dude behind the wheel, is so drunk he can't comprehend what's going on at all. His pal in the back seat, or rather lying on floor in the back, is out cold. They are both covered in blood, as are most surfaces of the car, but it looks like it's all from a bar fight, there don't appear to be any injuries from running off the road. Partner and I are trained in first aid, and have all our kits in our car, but we call to dispatch to get the real cops up here fast. Dude behind the wheel apparently thinks this would be a good time to leave, so he hits the gas to take off, and starts staring towards the edge, to get away from us. Fortunately, the car was wasn't running. I'm in the rear trying to see if the guy in the back is still breathing, while my partner is trying to talk to dude. Dude realizes why the car isn't moving, and so starts to fumble with the keys. Partner swiftly and carefully remove and pocket the keys, without dude realizing what's happening. So, about 10 minutes later, the police arrive, along with an ambulance. We all shake our heads at these idiots, and are thankful they didn't kill themselves or anyone else. Everyone goes away, and then it goes to court. The driver is fighting the drunk driving charges, says it wasn't him behind the wheel. My partner and I, along with the two cops, are pulled in to give our stories. Dude gets off on a technicality, when partner took away dude's keys, he took away dude's rights to leave. He detained the idiot without reading him any sort of rights of detainment. Not a serious crime, but it seriously pissed the four of us off, and I'm obviously still cheesed about it 30 years later. I'm not in law enforcement, but I'm in a related field, and saw a situation in which prosecutors had four main witnesses to a crime, drug trafficking, I think, suddenly back out, and refused to testify against the guy. Without their testimony, they were unable to convict the guy. Everyone knew that the witnesses had been blackmailed, but no one could do anything about it. Something happened once, when I was working in casino surveillance which really ate me up inside. As the story goes, we were very understaffed at the time. Basically I was working alone at 4am on a Saturday night. I was watching two separate events on the CCTV. One to cameras I had two males causing destruction of the casino property which was escalating quickly. And on another to cameras I had two males being asked to leave the casino for being intoxicated. I was paying attention to both incidents, but was far more focused on the damage to property as the two males were not showing any signs of aggression, and basically left on their own accord. The two guys met what I thought was a third friend outside, and went to get a taxi without any fuss at all. I say friend, as they shook hands, and appeared friendly towards each other. The three guys walked towards the taxi rank all buddy buddy, so I focused back on the more important business. After a few seconds I look back at the three guys and the third friend is lying in the middle of the road. I called in extra security slash medic straight away, they got there in seconds to help the guy. But I couldn't find the original two guys. By this time shit was hitting the fan, no one knew where to look. I rewound the footage, and saw that security ran straight past the two guys as they got into a taxi and drove off. I did everything within my power to catch those two guys after that, I was fixated for a long time because I felt that it might in some way redeem myself. I'm too late to matter, but I hope someone enjoys this. I worked as a border patrol guard for several years. Every day around 6pm this young fit gentleman would approach one of our lanes on his bicycle, wearing biker spandex and a big ol' backpack full of sand. Every day we would ask him the nature of his visit and he would claim that he was training with his cycling club across the border. Every day we would sift the sand and look for anything he was smuggling. 
A few times we even x-rayed the bike, but we never found anything. This went on for the better part of 4 years. I met him in a bar, after he'd stopped showing up, and so happens I wasn't with the station anymore. I asked him man to man, what were you taking across the border? And he looked me straight in the eye and said bicycles. UK police here, special constable, police officer but unpaid, not XO, man raped and attacked woman. After she told us her terrifying story, that left me speechless, the things he did to her was, unlike nothing I have heard before, even on reddit. He was a big bloke, last time he was arrested a large amount of force was used. After we nicked him, we took him in for interview where of course he denied it. What happened next isn't official. But. She had said he knows people that would sort her out and all of a sudden the next day the case was dropped. We desperately tried to find an offense to protect this poor woman, but none was found. Sad thing is, this happens all the time, and often we are the ones that pick up the pieces after it's too late. My heart goes out to all other officers slash emergency service workers, it's a tough job. I cannot give specific details in my post about the event, so please do not ask, but feel free to ask anything, but it may not be answered. I have a good friend who was beaten by her grandmother, and molested by her grandfather. Took it to court, he got off on a plea bargain. He raped and molested 3 young girls for I think about 14 years, and all he gets is put on the sex offender registry. Grandmother got nothing as far as I'm aware. We shouldn't focus our system purely on punishment, but this monster is out in the public around children now. Note, I'm not an officer, and I'm afraid to reveal any more details about these cases, because the people involved genuinely terrify me. Two people were charged for kicking and shooting a man with a pellet gun almost to death. State was forced to dismiss charges, because their witness didn't appear. Two men were charged with the murder of a girl. They tied her to a table, and sawed her right foot off. Then they started on her left foot. The saw broke. They killed her, and dismembered her body, leaving the pieces of her body in a bag behind a grocery store. Charges were dismissed by the state for lack of evidence. I will note, however, that in this case, it is very likely that the state will try to refile. All of these people are currently walking the streets. My dad is a major crimes investigator. He can usually get his criminals, but this one was a 14 year old boy. I don't remember what he did. They had him in custody and my dad was interrogating him, and the first thing my dad did was read him his Miranda rights. For whatever reason, my dad decided it would be a good idea to break down the Miranda rights so the kid could understand them better, probably so he wouldn't feel that he coerced a confession. When the kid had no idea, he continued to give a full confession. Well that kinda backfired, because when they got to court, the kid's lawyer got them to throw out the entire confession saying that he did not understand his rights and that, based on the way my dad phrased it, the kid thought, if he admitted it, my dad would write it down on his clipboard, and it would never come back, to bite him in the ass. I guarantee that wasn't true, the kid just admitted to it, and then realized he made a huge mistake. The court threw out the confession and the kid got away with it. My dad was pissed. TL. Doctor don't be nice to criminals. Even young ones. My father was in CSI and the biggest murder that hit our town in years happened when I was in 3rd or 4th grade. The first time they went to trial the suspect was found guilty due in part to my dad's work. But somehow the defense attorneys found out that the prosecution had hidden some details that could have caused a non-guilty ruling. It went to trial again. When the second trial happened probably 3 or 4 years later my father had to return and give his testimony, and it ended in a hung jury. The third trial didn't happen, until I was a senior in high school and this time they find him not guilty. I've never asked my dad about it, but my mom says that, while he never said it outright it always disappointed him that this happened. After the fact there were a bunch of true crime shows, made about the case. It's weird seeing a show about a case your father worked on. This'll get buried but here goes. I used to be in rat at my university, and one night, while I was on duty some jackass got arrested, and I had to go to court to testify about said incidents, which is unrelated to the rest of the story. While we were waiting for the court to open, my boss, the other rat on duty with me, and the campus police officer involved, were making small talk, and we asked him 
if he ever went to the sentencing of cases he was involved with. The officer said that he stopped going after a guy he had pulled off of the girl he was raping got off scot-free. Gotta keep a few details fuzzy, but here goes. So this guy picks up a hitchhiker in a rural area. Unfortunately for her, she had fallen on some hard times and didn't particularly want to be found, which goes some way towards explaining why nobody noticed when he kidnapped her and kept her as his slave for several days. Eventually she manages to escape and contacts police, but he never comes back to the house. Finally he's tracked down in a larger city some distance away. He's brought in, and a search of his house in this city reveals a disturbingly clean basement with some indication that there had been shackles installed on the wall previously, but no forensic evidence. There was also a very large blowtorch sitting in the center of the room. He's brought in, and his name is cross-checked against various databases, and lo slash behold, turns out he was caught in Europe after almost exactly the same thing happened, right down to the blowtorch in the basement. Their case had gotten fucked somehow, and he'd just been deported back here. Thanks for the warning. He makes some admissions regarding European events, but nothing that was particularly useful here. In fact the only thing his admission really achieved was assuring that we were absolutely certain the serial killer was doing a very very light stretch. 